Hey guys, it's Chris Klast here. I'm just going to go over a PowerShell script that I created. The purpose of the script is to create an index of the file system. So I'm using this on my external hard drives. And with another script, which I haven't edited yet, I'm going to be looking for duplicates by using these indexes. So um, let me just show you a few things that I've done here. And I don't necessarily want to go over the whole uh, script, but I just want to show you a few things that I've done that I don't normally do. Well, stuff that's new in this script that I don't usually use. So for instance, um, when I had originally created this script in the first like iterations of it, um, I was, uh, I was um, iterating through the file system using get child item, you know, with recurse. And I was um, appending all the properties of the files to a PS custom object. And then I was just straight appending this custom PS, uh, this PS custom object to the, the CSV file. And, but that was just way too slow. So what I did instead was I added this temp file to an array. And then once the script finished, I, you know, added that array to the CSV file. The issue there was, you know, my memory got to over 2.2 gigabytes with just one external hard drive. And I was running three of these scripts simultaneously. So, and it wasn't necessarily an issue for me, but just out of the curiosity of how I can reduce the amount of memory usage, I, uh, I created this variable called append account, and just within the pipeline, at the end of the pipeline, I have this right here, which is if the iteration of a pipeline module, or is it modulus? Um, you know, right now I have it set to a thousand, but usually I would I would probably really set this to like a hundred thousand. So if there's no remainder. Um, that means that, um, you know, it's, it's done in a chunk of whatever my append count is. And then also I added this just to make sure it wasn't, you know, I wasn't zero. So otherwise it would append, it would go through this, but there would nothing be appended because it hadn't done anything yet. Or maybe it would just be like one file. So, um, and then it, once it uh, appends that to the file, it clears the array just a garbage collection, and uh, from there you should see the uh, the memory drop. So this is where this is my memory here, just opening PowerShell. Let me go ahead and run this. Let me do this at like fifty thousand. See if we notice uh, the drop, the increase in drop. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through it. Now you'll see this is this is all of the files that are being added to the array, just shown in increments of 100, that's my progress. Uh, what is it, write progress? Only shows it in chunks of 100, but. So now you can see we're up over two, about 220. See how high this goes, it won't be that high, not at 50,000. So this is writing um, file properties to an array. Now just hit 50,000, so we're at 277. 287, 297, 300, 320. Whoa, look at that. It's really jumping up there. wonder why it's going so high. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's see if that, uh, that changes. Wow, 425. Wow, I wonder if that... I wonder why it went so high. Was Did the append... Um, sorry, one second. Did this append, does that add to the memory? How much does that add? Anyways, um, or maybe while it was appending, it just, you know, there's a backlog or delay or something that just continues to have the memory shoot up. 
I don't really know why that shot up so high, but we'll see if it does it again in the second batch. So once that gets to 100,000, we'll see. So 260 again, 270. Let's see if it skyrockets again. Oh yeah, look at that. Interesting. So it's doing putting a lot into memory here. Let's see if it drops back down to like 160 or whatever it did last time. There it goes, 150, 160. Okay. Interesting. Wow, look at that. That's jumped up too. Um, okay, so let me just go ahead and hit pause or stop. So you've seen what um, this did with the, you know, doing it in batches. And so I have it right um, to the host each time. Block appended, I guess I could say batch or something, but yeah. Um, some other things. So that was kind of cool, I thought. So I thought I'd mention that. Um, let me go back up here. Um, another thing here is uh, previously I I used to always have the this temp file because I use these PS custom objects a lot, and I normally have this in a pipeline or for each loop, and then I add it to an array. But this time. I thought, you know, I want this in my configuration section up here, this region config. I want everything in the script that needs to be edited per run to be in this configuration section. I didn't want to have to go into the script to make that modification. If I wanted to have different property names or if I want to remove some like this right here, I removed. Um, so to have it all in one section, you know, I what I eventually did, you know, was I created this class uh, called my object, and I just put the PS custom object there. And what that allowed was, um, so you could see that I have like these objects in here, but they, they don't really have any real context here outside of the pipeline. But since I'm not instantiating or creating a new object of this type of class until I get into the pipeline, it doesn't really matter then until it's in the pipeline. Then, once it's in the pipeline, then this matters. Then this actually fills in with the file. This becomes like the file object. Um, and then I have, I, wa I also wanted to get the list of properties that I want, which, is, which are these. I wanted that in a, a list that I can use, um, you know, to compare against um, what's currently in, you know, let's say a, a, another index. So the purpose of this script is to create an index. Let's say I wanted to use my previous index to create a new index. So it allows me, so I can put CSV there and put the source path to that CSV. And so, but I still want to just, well, what, properties do I really want with the new CSV? So that's what this is going to be. And so I needed to compare it, uh, the ones that I want, props wanted, to the CSV properties, which will be done later. So that's why I created this here. Um, yeah. Um, and then I put the add, um, an add method here. So this is a properties wanted method. This is an add method. Um, so to add this object to an array, so that's what that does. And let me just like take a step back. Actually, no, before I do that, let me go and show you where it's actually used that. So it's in my create index, a bit further down. Um, it's in the directory section here, directory source. So here it is. So here you have the pipeline the head of the pipeline, and then here I'm saying new object equals my class that I created, new, and then new object add. So it's adding the temp file that I outlined in my class, and it's adding it to the array, which I created here. 
outside of the for each loop or outside of the pipeline. Um, I don't know if that's actually necessary or not in this case because in when I'm pulling from a CSV, I don't actually do it that way. I actually wrote a note about that. Um, let's see, right here. I just did the regular array add. So, yeah. So anyways, um, let's go back here. And let me tell you what I had done temporarily that didn't work in my case. So before I had created this class, I was experimenting with script blocks. And so I had just wrapped this in a script block along with this, and I executed that with the invoke command inside the pipeline. Um, but the issue was I wasn't sure how to get this list of property names outside of the script block. And I know that there's um, an AST property of a script block, and, I, and within there there's like, I don't know, string or something like that, and I can see this whole PS custom object, but it's a string format. I wasn't sure how just to get these directly. Whereas this here is a little bit more direct. I call an attempt file object and directly call in PS object properties. That's a little bit more direct in my opinion versus like getting this in a string format and then having to parse that. I just wasn't, you know, comfortable doing that like that. But I don't know. Maybe there's another way. I just don't know. If you know how to pull, let's just pretend for a second that this was a script block. Do you know how to pull these property names from that script block? So that's my question, if anyone knows. OK. Um, so yeah, that's why I ended up with a class, which thankfully this worked. OK, so another thing is that I haven't really done before until now is create a tag file or a metadata file. So this is going to be a, a parallel file that's created um, that just has information about the CSV index that I'm creating that I don't want stored in the CSV. Um, so like variables and errors and things like that, I can put that all in, in there, whatever I want. Um, and then I just append a, a dot tag extension on the end of the file. So it can have the exact same file name as the CSV that I'm creating for the index, but then just put dot tag at the end of it. So that way you know they're associated with each other. Um, so I do that. And also, um, I am using, let me go down to the bottom. Uh, I'm using transcript. I don't normally use that, but I've decided I want a little bit of logging of some kind. I was considering making my own custom logs, but I'm like, isn't this what this does? I kind of tested this out. Um, so I give it a, a file name for the transcript. And um, yeah, so there's that. And I have it like doing this like out of the way thing. I have this function here called rename file name, and that's that was like not really gonna. It doesn't really have much of a purpose now unless I use the same folder path as the current, you know, one that was already created. So like, let me see if I have one. So here it created this. When I ran this script last, it created this folder. And um, so for whatever reason, I wanted to use this, you know, or maybe I wanted to use, yeah, this folder as my new, like, export folder. Then it would look to see if there was already a file with the same name with this dot tag, and it would rename the new file. So it would be like, create index one dot csv dot tag something like that which yeah so that I mean I don't even think that's even necessary anymore because now I have it creating a folder here each time 
with the date. So it's going to be unique each time. Um, so you could probably ignore <laughs> the rename file name part of this, but that was kind of something that, um, I, I, yeah, so I don't think that's an issue, even for my CSV file, because it's creating a, a unique folder each time, so, whereas before it was just putting it all into one folder, and so it was like having conflicts with file names being the same, so that's why I had that, so I could probably even get rid of that now, not necessary, I don't think, but just in case, I guess I can leave it there. Uh, here's the thing that I had found out, which was like if you're doing the get child item just on its own, um, it doesn't look for, it doesn't find like hidden files or system files or something. You have to like run with admin rights supposedly, um, but also use the, the the flag, you know, hyphen force at the get child item command. Um, so here I just have a check to see is the current PowerShell session running with admin rights? And then, and then just let, asks you, well, do you want to continue or not? But that was pretty, I think that's kind of nice to have. Um, if you have a PowerShell script that should have admin rights, that should probably have something like this in there so you don't get the wrong results back. Um, let's see, what else was there? Go back into the configuration and see. I guess. Let's see. Let me just go through this really quickly. Create index. Oh yeah, this is a thing here. So also when I initially created this, you know, I ran through the the whole file system pulled all the files into an index, and then I realized after the words, I was like, oh, I'm missing some file properties that, uh, you know, like date modified. I was like, that should be in the index. So when I went to use the CSV as my source data to pull, um, to at least just pull the file names to get the date modified um, properties, it was appearing as if files were deleted or something. But it turns out that using a file name, like using a test path or get item, on a file with a file name greater than 256 characters, like errors out. So you have to append this, um, this string here as like a prefix to the file name to fix that. So that's something new I learned. And I don't even know like, I couldn't even read anything about this. Somebody helped me online, and they had this very elaborate um, function. And at the end of the day, all it did was really prefix this. So I was like, oh, well, I don't need that elaborate function that uses, like, C Sharp or whatever he was using. And uh, yeah, just simply add that if it's greater than 256 characters. So here's some, some test, test paths. Um, I'll give you an option to either rename the file or overwrite the file. But that's like you have to change. That's only applies if, if you make this false. Default create new file. It's true. And that really doesn't really matter anymore because now I have it creating its own folder. So it kind of makes that obsolete. But I'm just leaving that anywhere. Or anyway. Um, I'm using these script blocks. Again, I don't usually use script blocks a lot, but in this case I, I thought it was an interesting idea. So in your configuration, you can decide source type is either going to be a directory or a CSV, so an existing CSV. And so this is going to create the head of my, um, oh gosh, um, pipeline. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, it's, so this is going to be the, the head of my pipeline, either one of these two, depending on what source type is. And so if it's a directory, you know, there were certain direct directories, that, uh, you know, folders that I didn't want to include in my index, which was like recycling bin and a few others. So I actually included this exclude directories um, flag here. And all it's, it's doing is pulling the names. Um, 
and it's just sending that list of names to another get child item, which then goes through, recurses through all of those folders, except for the ones I excluded. Um, so it's just like a high level, you know, very early on filter. Um, but it would still pull hidden files and stuff nested within there. So that's kind of why I did it that way. Because sometimes at, at like the root of a directory, there's hidden files, you know, in the hard drive. I'm like, well, you don't need those necessarily. I don't know. I don't need them. But within, you know, the folder nested in there somewhere, there might be hidden files that I, I want. So that's why I did it that way. Let's see if there's anything else I could pull out of here. And so here, yeah, the head of the uh, pipeline, invoke command script block, which is kind of cool. Here's the progress bar. I, I found out that, so if I was to put the flag, um, I think it's progress, let me just see. One. Oh, no, percent, percent complete. Yeah, so percent complete, um, what I found out is if, the total number that you think should be, like what you think should be 100%, um, if that number is too small, so like for instance, my, my external hard drive has a million files in it. If I put, you know, 900,000 as like the 100% complete, you know, number, anything over 900,000, it's, it's just going to throw tons of errors into this host and slow the script down, you know, dramatically. So I just left it off completely. I, I'm not sure, without having to go through the entire file system, I don't know if an, a hard drive has a number of, like an easy way to count files without counting, every, without going through the whole disk. I don't know if it's stored somewhere. You know, maybe there is. I was, I, I was considering um, doing that with my index. Once an index is created, I was thinking, well, I can store the number of files there, so if I rerun it, I at least can have a progress bar. But then again, files on that hard drive can change from the last time I created an index, and that would be off, and it would create all these errors the next time I used it. So I just left it off. There's no right progress. I mean, it's the right progress. There's just no percentage complete bar that would go across. Just have to, you know, I don't know, hope <laughs> that there's an end to it. Um, let's see if there's anything else. So I got the long names. I split. So if it's a CSV source, I split it into long file name or short file name. Here's uh, what properties are missing from the CSV. <clears throat> so there's. I'm, I'm doing a compare objects of uh, props wanted versus props versus the props in the CSV, and that creates props needed. And I'm only running, so this is like in the pipeline, so I only do this one time. That's why I have this props needed is set to false. And it turns it to true, so it skips that one every time once it's done once. Here, um, here's another thing that might be useful. Um, so I'm already in a pipeline, but then I have an, a, a for loop down here. As a result, this object is out of context. I can't just say, you know, uh, this object, add member value, and then use this object again. No, I had to use an external something. I had to use an object outside of this context, which is what I've created here, which is this file, which is literally the file object by using get item on the long name. And so that's what I have here. And it's the property needed, so I, I, I'm literally looping through the properties that I need. Um, and so that's actually going to be a string here at the end of this, which is a property name. Um, I have an option to fill in blanks. So that first time I created an index, um, or no, the second time, it was missing property values because it couldn't find those uh, files that had file names greater than 256 characters. And so I had all these blanks and I was like, what is that about? 
So if I wanted to fix an index like that, I can use this uh, fill blanks equals true in the config. Okay, so the short name's about the same thing. <clears throat> Here it appends each uh, for each round in the pipeline, for each iteration. Um, here I give it some options here. Here's how I, um, so when I append the array to the CSV file, I use the properties that I want. Right? But in this case down here, I'm saying grab all the properties. And the reason for that is if my source is a CSV and not a directory, the CSV might have properties in it uh, even beyond what I want. Like it might, I don't want to lose properties that were in the original CSV necessarily. I may not want that. Um, so I'm saying give me all of the properties that, so this array is going to have the properties from the original CSV, I believe, and uh, plus the ones that I wanted. That's what that does. Um, but also, so I have an or flag here that's <clears throat> that says or uh, if my source type is a directory, because if it's a directory, I don't want to pull every property for a directory. That's just too many properties. So I, I limit it to properties wanted. And here's the tag file. So it has the same name as my CSV file, but I add that tag at the end. Here I just add a few values. Clear memory, we already showed you that. Next item. And at the end of the pipeline, I had to duplicate this stuff. I had to do the append to CSV again and append to the, uh, or at least overwrite the metadata of the tag file. Um, because, you know, this might be, where is it here? Append count might be 10,000, but if I got 10,500, those last 500 need to be added to the CSV file. So that's what this is. So basically the pipeline ends at, you know, 10,005. Well, yeah, the last time that this is actually appended to was at 10,000, but it's at 10,500. The pipeline ends, and then those last 500 are appended to the CSV file. And I think that's it. I crossed out that stuff. <clears throat>